everybody. Welcome to uh, day 16 out of 24 in our 24 part series. It's a pleasure to welcome Dr. Benny, Benny Gesundheit, who, while he lives in a lunch food, is speaking to us from his native Switzerland. Um, Benny is like I would call a Renaissance man. He uh, is a, a medical doctor. Uh, he, we met him first because he did a uh, fellowship in uh, pediatric hematology oncology at the hospital for six children in, 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 in Toronto. Uh, he's taught medical ethics. While he was in Toronto, he also did a PhD on Jewish medical ethics. He writes a book. It's where he gave me this idea, actually. For every simch in the family, he writes a book. And uh, five children, that was a debate to have five or 24 children. And Benny, if you remember that discussion. And I'm holding here his, his commentary on St. Fertilian published by Corin which Benny wrote in honor of his daughter's wedding. So it's a pleasure to have Benny um, speak to speak on Sefer Tilim. And, and today's class is sponsored by Claire and Howard, Howard Lewinsky in memory of Howard's grandmother, Chana Leah Bat Moshe. Um, may we all be blessed with long life. Dr. Benny, it's all yours. Bakasha. Ken, Ken. Dear Rabbi, can you see it? Can you hear me? Can you see it? Can you hear me? I can see you, but thank you. Okay. Dear Rabbi J, dear friends, it's an outstanding honor to teach with Rabbi J's class. We know each other from 20 plus years ago, and uh, I want to wish you and Il uh, Ilana of an Meet Ilana Mazaltov on the Thanks. on the wedding of Atara and Noah, and Chazal say we have to start with a joke. But here I, I think I can be very serious. Why is her name Atara? Why did you call her Atara? Everything that Rabbi Jay and Ilana do has a purpose, a clear plan. They obviously knew that Atara in English, in Latin, as you can see from the pasuk in Shira Shirim, Tzena Urena Benot Yerush Benot Zion B'Melech Shlomo. The crown that a mother is giving to her daughter, the parents giving to the daughter for the wedding. So if you translate that to the Vulgata, we will not translate the entire sentence, but Atara in Latin is Corona. So we are very happy that at the time of the Corona, where we unfortunately see a lot of suffering in the world, that, uh, that uh, Atara and Ori are getting married and that we focus on good things. They should have a bite Israel and have a big Nachat and Atara for Atara in despite the Corona time. Mazal Tov. I'm extremely excited to tell you about Sefer Tehillim. Normally when I prepare a shiur, it takes a week, two weeks, a month. This shiur I'm preparing nine years. It's now for nine years that beside on my medical activity, I'm very, very interested in Sefer Tehillim. And it goes back, I would say 35 years at least, that I want to understand Tanakh and Sefer Tehillim in particular. I'm trying to give you now a totally new view, a total new perspective on Sefer Tehillim. It goes back, I cannot say it's my own insights, it's my own, uh, research, but I learned it from some American researchers, and in particular, the German researchers, which I'll mention the slide at the end. And the question is, what, why is Sefer Tehillim called a book? If you say in Hebrew, Sefer, a book, it has the same letters like Sipur, a story. And a Sipur has numbers, misparim. Why is the book of Tehillim called a book? Is there any connection between Mizmor Aleph and Bet, the first and the second chapter? Why do we have five books in Sefer Tehillim? Why do we have an end in Sefer Tehillim, which is a lot of hallelujah at the end, Psukei de Zimran? And all these questions, of course, I want to understand chapter one and chapter two and so far up to the last one. But at the end, I want to understand why was it organized in this way? And this research is a new research, very, very interesting, that in particular German scholars found it. I was looking in Chazal and I found quite a lot. 
And I never found the overview and the systematic approach that Ghazal have in the way I find it in the German research. Furthermore, with ph phenomenal search systems today, uh, we can search the letters, we can search the text. And I'm working now, you can find on telim.org, on my web website in Hebrew, 175 lectures on all the Mizmorim, the 150, each of them. And I'm trying to explain them in the bigger context. What I'm going to tell you now is an outstanding chidush, an innovation, a new insight. How interesting that the Bible wasn't given yesterday, a few hundred and thousand years ago, and brilliant minds were thinking to comment, to, to explain the Bible. And here we have a total new view, which I'm excited to present you. I called the lecture, the book of Sefer Tehillim as a narrative entity. A narrative entity doesn't have to be what happened day one, day two, day three. There are different narrative rules and narrative features in a book, which I'm going to explain you now. I have here a presentation which has many, many slides. I'm not going to show you all the material, but I'm trying to present an impression and a new light on the book. And once, if you understand this slide, you understand everything. Interesting enough that most of the commentators have beautiful explanation on chapter one, two, and three. They were not bothered what is the structure. The famous outstanding commentator, Rabbi Avraham ben Ezra, Ibn Ezra, a scholar of the 13th century Spain, he wrote outstanding comment. Uh, commentaries to the entire Bible and to the to uh, Tehillim. And in his famous introduction, he says, after a lot of arguments and questions, he comes to the, frust frust to the frustration, to the conclusion, there is no order in the book of Tehillim. There is no flow. The truth is, that's his conclusion, each chapter, each, each chapter stands on his own. So you might have a beautiful, uh, 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 you might have a beautiful chain with a lot of stones. You see, every stone is beautiful, but you never see the stone. You never see a chain. Every mismo has a special atmosphere, a special message, and a beautiful insights, but you don't see the flow. And here I'm trying, in, during this lecture, to give you an overview. What is the flow of Sefer Tehillim? I'm not going to argue with Ibn Ezra. I'm that small compared to this big, brilliant mind. But I want to show what are the rules. And I'm trying to be very simple, very systematic. Sometimes, uh, after researching nine years and writing it up, the website, and, and preparing a book, which will take me another few years, Bezrat Hashem, to finish. But sometimes it's a good exercise to give a simple overview, which I would like to do now. The book of Tehillim is split into five books. Nobody has to be very creative to think about five books of one book. It's the Chumash. It's the Torah. The first book begins with the first mismo, the first chapter. Happy is the man, Ashrei Ha'ish, who is learning all day Torah. Kim betorat Hashem chifzo, uvetorato yehege yomam v'layla. All day he learns Torah. So the atmosphere, before you read the book, that you have five parts of the book, and the first chapter tells you, happy the man who reads the Torah, you are in a Torah atmosphere, not of Moshe Rabbeinu, but of David. Interesting enough, David HaMelech as a king, the most famous king of Jewish history, who, who has a very special figure, David HaMelech, he didn't only live his own life, he continues to live many, many years afterwards. Every child in the kindergarten knows the song David Melech Yisrael, Chai Kayam. And we say every, every time when we make Kiddush Halvana, once a month, David Melech Yisrael, Chai Kayam, Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah. King David lives. Why do we say that? Because in the, in the Yeshayahu, Yirmiyahu, Yechezkel, in the prophets, 
and the Betreasar, very often, David the Melech is mentioned. He will come back. His spirit inspires us many, many years after his death. So his career is not over with his death. He has life after his death, and that is known from Yeshayahu Yirmiyahu Yechezkel. And here we have five books, which have each of them a doxology, an ending. At every, every book at the end is a certain uh, closing of the book. Why? So if you say there is no organization, I can explain why. And Ibn Ezra, who thinks there is no structure, he has the following argument, a very good point. At the end of the second book, it says, if you can see my arrow in chapter 20, uh, 72, Kalut Filot David Ben Ishai. That's the end of David's chapters, all his prayers. If it's over, it's gone. But you can see here in my diagram, prepared by an outstanding graphic uh, artist, uh, Shulamit, uh, uh, Meir, and she, we, we call it here, that is the first collection of David in the first book. We have the second collection of David. In between, Mizmorim dedicated to Asaf and to Bnei Korach. We have 12 before and afterwards. Here we have all together 12 of Asaf and 12 of Bnei Korach, and they are before and afterwards, not symmetrically, but they are both 12. Isn't that a meaningful structure? It, it doesn't, it's not yet clear, but there is an intention. Twelve, left and right, surrounding the second collection of King David. And afterwards it says, Kalut Filot David Ben Ishai. That's the end. The chapter beforehand in 71, Pasuk Tet, it says, Al Tashlicheni Le'et Zikna. King David prays, uh, don't throw me in the age of an old man when I have no energy, when I have no, no future anymore. The next chapter is dedicated to his son. Lishlomo, Elohim mishpatecha lemelech ten, v'tzidkatcha leven melech. So that is, he is coming to the end of his life, 71 and 72. And at the end it says, Kalut filot David ben Yishai. So how come is he continuing? Here in the third book, is one chapter dedicated to David. In the, fourth, in the fourth book, two chapters dedicated to David. At the beginning of the fifth book, there are three chapters at the beginning dedicated to David. In Shir HaMa'alot, another four chapters dedicated to David. And at the very end, eight chapters dedicated to David. All together, 18 chapters, one, two, three, four, and eight. Why? If he died, how is he talking? If he's talking, why do you say, Kalut Filot David Ben David? Kalut Filot David Ben Yishai. So we understand why Ibn Ezra said, forget it, there is no organization. What's the new approach? The new approach is a very, very simple one. Look at the entire book, read it over and over, Sefer Tehillim is a little bit bigger than Sefer Ovadia. Sefer Ovadia has one chapter. So to read the entire book Ovadia is also a, a challenge, but in one day you are done. To read the entire book and not to lose the overview is quite a challenge. What's the meaning? The answer is totally simple. And that is what the research says. The name of this research is in, uh, in German or in English, they call it the canonical approach to Sefer Tehili, or to the book of the Psalter. The, con the canonical editing, the shaping. I translated it into Hebrew, Parshanut Heksherit. Heksher is the connection or the context. We have a text, and the text of each chapter has a context, the next chapter. Look at the neighbor. And that's a very interesting approach in research, which we know from psychology. You look in psychology at the entire person, gestalt psychology, the personality. We look in medicine, what's the interaction between the body and the soul, psychosomatics. We are trying to understand not each piece on his own, we are trying to see the flow. And that is the approach on Sefer Tehillim to see the overview. What's the answer? 
that David HaMelech died in 72 at the end of the second book, and he keeps appearing one, two, three, four, eight. Beautifully structured. There is a comeback of David HaMelech. The dead King David, David Melech Yisrael Chai Kayam. He inspires us. He is, he is dead, but every child thinks he continues. Why? Because the prophets were talking. If we follow the mitzvot and we follow the vision and the prophecy of Hashem, there will be a renewal, a rebirth of David HaMelech. What an unbelievable statement, which is very interesting in the context of the book. If we think today, and I think that's the reason why I'm so addicted to this approach, we, Am Yisrael, are coming back to Eretz Yisrael the same way at the time of Shibat Zion after the exile in Babylon, they came back after 70 years. This time period is called Shivat Zion. Shivat Zion is mentioned the return to Zion, which is uh, Ezra Nehemiah. It's mentioned only once in the Bible. In Tehillim, you know it all by heart. Shira Ma'alot, Beshuv Adonai Shivat Zion, Ainu Kecholmin. We come back. That is 127. We come back. The dead King David lives. Whoever who comes back to Yerushalayim, Ir David Bachana, the city where David lived, he is welcomed. When he comes back to Zion by the, by, the, by, uh, by the hero of the city. Who is the hero of the city? David. So despite that he is dead, he welcomes us. And we are searching for him. After his death in 72 with Shlomo, he keeps praying. And he keeps praying once, two, three, four, five. And he keeps singing. And he keeps saying Hallel. The Hallel units, which is a beautiful, beautiful analysis. I can just give you a few teasers, a few impressions. I cannot cover the entire book in 60 minutes. Here we have the Hallel in black, white on, uh, white on blue, sorry. The first Hallel, when they come back from the exile, 107. We Annie, have the Hallel. Annie, yeah. can you make the screen a little bit wider and, and bigger, just a little bit... Um... I think that would be helpful for people. Uh, you can also, you know, print out. We have it on there on the side. Okay, if you can just, yeah, a little bit wider. That made it smaller, actually. Okay, yeah, that's. You want it bigger like that? Well, bigger, yeah, and then you can zoom in. People can actually see what you're <laughs> talking about. Otherwise, it's a little bit too hard to, I find it hard to follow. Good. Right. Yeah. This is better, much better, yeah. And then I want to tell you, Rabbi Jay, I was told one by a good friend who is a teacher that my material is far too, too, too packed yeah. and I have to do it only one page. Okay. So the same friend, friend Amos Safrai, he offered me to present the entire Sefer Tehilim on 18 meters in his school in Yerushalayim. So there I walk around, I dress up up King David and I walk through my book. So I cannot do that here, but I want to show you the overview. I want to go back here, first chapter one, book one and two, King David, surrounded by the singers in the Beit HaMikdash, in the temple. What do we have at the end? At the end, the doxology, the end of the book, Baruch Adonai Eloheh Yisrael, Mehaolam ve'ad haolam, Amen ve'amen. Blessed is Hashem, God of Israel, from, from now for, for eternity, Amen ve'amen. We have almost the same at the end of the second book, as you can see here. Baruch Hashem, Elokim, Eloke Israel. I cannot explain the difference. And it will fulfill, it will fill the entire universe because the kingdom should go all over of David and Shlomo. And that's the end of King David. What happened in the third book? The third book is the destruction. The third book is the end, the deterioration, moral deterioration of Am Yisrael, political deterioration of Am Yisrael. And chapter 89 at the end gives a terrible description that everybody is killed. All what you promised to King David, says the Meshorer, says the Sefer Tehilim, 
talks to Hashem in a very tough language. I'm not aware of any source in the Bible and afterwards talks so tough to Hashem. You promised Hashem. You didn't fulfill a word. David is dead. All his servants are dead. And we are all dead. And at the end it says, Baruch Hashem le'olam, amen ve'amen. I cannot open the text now. Please read it at the end of 89. And he is not saying, Eloke Israel. And he is not saying, Meha'olam ve'ad ha'olam. So if he is blessing Hashem, give a full blessing, like here. If you are not capable to bless Hashem in the presence of the destruction, don't say anything. So what happened here? Can you see that Eloke Israel is missing here? It appears here, here, not here, but it appears here. Why is it not appearing here? And that is a beautiful religious insight. Even in very bad times, Am Yisrael continues the tradition to bless Hashem. He can't really say it with a full mouth. He cannot talk about Eloke Israel. But he cannot stop to see himself, despite that the memory of King David is gone, destroyed. It's history. But he cannot stop to see himself as part of the continuity. When I explained that, I used to mention Eli Wiesel's very special story that in one of the barracks in Auschwitz, they did a Beit Din, a Din Torah for Kiddush Bochum. And they were sitting, rabbis, and they were sitting, and the fact whatever happens in, uh, in Auschwitz and people are killed and the crematorium, and they have a, had a long Din Torah, rabbis. And Eli Wiesel describes it very powerfully, Kedorko. And after three days, they came to the conclusion, what God did here is a disaster. He is guilty. And at the end, the rabbi says, and now, Tfilat Mariv. And that's exactly the effect here. We have a disaster. Whatever was promised to King David in the first and second, oops, Sorry. Whatever was promised to King David in the first two books, it's gone. It's destroyed. We have in the third book, chapter 79 and 83, where it says they came and killed everybody. And all your servants, all your avadecha are food for the animals and for the birds. What did you do, Hashem? And they say in 83, Asher amru lechu v'nakhidem goi. They mentioned the nations, the enemies, we will destroy the Jewish people, and the name will not never ever be mentioned anymore. Endlösung, the final solution. 83. At the end, the chapter says, it is a disaster what happened. Hold on, I don't know what happened here. Excuse me for a moment. Oh, sorry. So that's the impression at the end of the third book. What is he saying, David Melech? Now I have it here. Sorry, what is he saying here? He says at the end, I can't praise Hashem. But the next chapter is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is mentioned one single time as the author of a chapter in Tehillim. It is a collection. It is a collection of beliefs, of a belief system. And Moshe Rabbeinu is answering after this terrible destruction, a depression, a frustration, everybody is killed. But we believe it will continue. Who is coming at the time of a crisis, at the, at the time of a, a loss of hope? It was in Egypt, Moshe Rabbeinu. After the Chet Egel, Moshe Rabbeinu prays for Hashem. Forty years in the desert, he is praying. Interesting enough, he appears only here at the beginning of the fourth book. The third book 
has 17 chapters and it goes down. The fourth book has 17 chapters and there is a restoration. There is a rebuild, finding back to a belief. Who is helping us to believe? Moshe Rabbeinu. Gemara Rosh Hashanah Yud Zayin says, Vayavor Hashem al Pana Vayikra. Melamed shenitatef HaKadosh Baruch Hu betalit. When, at the, when Moshe was praying at Har Sinai, at the Mount Sinai, after the Chet HaEgel, Moshe prayed, and Hashem appeared to him. And Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi, uh, Hashem dressed up, Kiv Yachol, with a talit, and told Moshe, whenever the Jewish people makes a sin, pray to me, Moshe, and I will forgive them. That is the source of Slichot. That's exactly the structure of Sefer Tehillim. Believe me, no German scholar connected that to the Gemara. Here exactly, Moshe begins and we start to believe. And one of the sources to believe is, we believe in Moshe Rabbeinu, the way he saved at Behar Sinai. Chapter 90 is exactly an imitation of Har Sinai. The same languages, the same situation, and the same challenges. And Moshe brings us back to believe. And we have here there a beautiful chapter, which we know very well from the Tefillah. Mizmor Shir Leyom HaShabbat, Tov Lehodot LaHashem Lozamer LeShimcha Elion. Lagid Baboke Chazdecha Vemunatcha Belelot. We say it Friday night. But why is it said here, chapter 92 at the beginning of the fourth book? Because when the world is coming back to us with Moshe Rabbeinu, and we still have hope, belief, and future, we believe again in the world. And Chachamim say, Yom Shekulo Shabbat, a day which is the, the, whole, the old day uh, is Shabbat. The source in the, in the manuscript says, Le'olam Shekulo Shabbat. We believe in the brave new world. There is not depression, not destruction, as we have it here. There is still hope. And it comes back. And once we come back from the exile at the end of chapter of the fourth book, we start a new process of building, of building Am Yisrael. Let me show you now the beautiful insight of the fourth doxology. And I make it bigger. We have something very interesting. Baruch Hashem, Eloke Israel, the same way we had it at the beginning. Compare these chatimot, these doxologies, the ending. Baruch Hashem, Eloke Israel, the same way we had it at the beginning. Baruch Hashem, Eloke Israel, Meha Olam, Avad Olam, at the beginning, and we have it here. But now we have a huge change. Ve'amar kol ha'am, Amen, Hallelujah. The entire nation will say, Amen and we praise Hashem. The German scholars uh, created a very nice expression. It is not King David and his belief of chapter one and two, which is coming back. It is King David's belief, which goes to the entire nation. Amen. It is, they call it the democratization of the belief system of King David. That's his belief but now it is for the entire nation. And instead of Amen ve Amen, which we have here, we have here a very meaningful change. Hallelujah. Why? Because once we see that we are coming back, we start to praise. And Sefer Tehilim, which is praise, really starts when it comes to the fourth book, when it comes to the fifth book. Back from the exile, Compared to Yerusha, to uh, Betzet Israel mi Mitzrayim, Halel Mitzri, Halel Gadol, and we rebuilt ourselves when we come back to to Eretz Israel. I'm born in Basel, and every time in Basel Yom Hatzmaut, people were talking Herzl had the Basel program, the Basel program, how to bring the Jewish nation back from all the places to Eretz Israel. A beautiful historical. Uh, event of the, the Congress of the Zionism in Basel. Believe me, what King David does in the fifth book is even better. We come back to Eretz Israel. We quote David HaMelech because we identify ourselves with David HaMelech. 
We think that once we left Egypt, now we come back. We have a new exodus. Halela Mitzri. What do we do afterwards? We learn Torah, the beautiful chapter 119, the longest chapter in Tehillim and the longest chapter in the Bible. And we say Shir HaMa'alot back to Eretz Yisrael, back from the exile, back to rebuild Eretz Yisrael. We, see the, we say the Halel Gadol, which is very similar, beautiful analysis, I cannot present it here. Halel Gadol says we are open for the entire mankind, for all nations. And we say, Al Narot Bavel, we are aware there are many, many Jews outside of Eretz Yisrael, still victims of the Al Narot Bavel on the rivers of Babylon. Bring them back. Bring all Jews back. And bring all nations back to Eretz Yisrael. That's the message of Sefer Tehillim. That's a narrative. King David lived in the past. He's not a past history. After the destruction, there is a rebuild, there is a restoration, and with the restoration, there is a return to Eretz Yisrael. 2,000 years, Am Yisrael was saying Tehillim, more. We see that in our days. That is unbelievable. I want to show you now more sources and some examples, which are amazing. And here, I think it's very important. Yes, I'm preparing a book with uh, so far 900 pages, and that's not how I can convince you. It will not be catchy to tell you from page one to two. But I tried to do something else. I'm trying to show you what I prepared with another graphic artist, Tamar Gutmann. And she did, we did that together. I drove her crazy and she made all the changes. That was the teamwork. And she survived and she was very happy at the end. Here we see King David at the beginning. Ashrei Haish, he learns Torah. And you see his head, you see his crown, and you see the stones of Yerushalayim. And here we have King David with his uh, nevel, his harp. And he is in the Mikdash, surrounded. He has two aspects. Every king has to write himself a Sefer Torah. In the first book, we have his Torah, his philosophy. In the second book, we have his presence in the Mikdash, which he didn't build, but he was the singer. And the third book, you see, it's, uh, it's gone. It's destroyed. And here it is our beautiful Mizmorim. How do we survive in the absence of Eretz Yisrael? Amazing theological insights. At the end of the first chapter, 73, it says, Vani kirvat Elohim litov. The closeness, the relationship to God is good without a Mikdash. There is a, there is a theology how can we continue without the Mikdash? And that's the third book, which has its own book, its own philosophy, it's its own world. And we have the fourth book. And you see what I ask her to do? There is a rebuild of the stones. And the stones are now in blue. They are not filled. They have no filling. It's vision. They come back. Tzadik Tamar Yifrach. I wanted her to put her Tamar. It's uh, showing up the Tamar. And Tamar survives in the desert, and it shows the way back. And her name is Tamar Gutman. And you see here the world. They come back from all over the world. All the nations except Hashem Malach Geut Lavish. These are the Mizmorim we say Friday night. Of course, we don't recognize Friday night that here is a narrative. Because Friday night starts with 95 and is done with 99. So how should we see the big pictures? We see the trees, we don't see the forest. There is much more into it than only the beautiful, wonderful 150 pearls. It's a story. And afterwards, they come back to Eretz Yisrael, and David HaMelech appears. The same David. One, two, three, four, eight. Together, eight, eight, 18. 18, if you want. David Melech Yisrael Chai is the numerical value of 18. And he brings the entire world, stepwise, to sing for Hashem. Very interesting. The German scholars, Zenger and Hosfeld, they developed that. I was in touch with one of them, with their students, Zechet Tzadikim Livracha, real believers and supporters of Eretz Yisrael theologically and in their interpretation. Beautiful research. And interesting enough, German 
Catholic researchers brought these insights to me. I sit in Yerushalayim, Ir David Bachana, and I have the honor to present it to Jews in Canada and all over the world. For that, I can only say L'chaim. Big L'chaim time. That Am Yisrael after 2000 years is coming back. I want to give you now a few examples. And it needs a lot of understanding. It needs a lot of learning. I focus on that for nine years and I find more and more, more new insights. Let me give you a few beautiful examples. Chapter Sefer Tehilim starts with chapter one and two. Interesting enough that in Sefer Tehilim, we cannot open the text and read. The first word is Ashrei in chapter one. And the last line in the second chapter is Ashrei Kol Chosebo. The beginning and the end is the same. Chazal found it. They said it. Kol chavival David, patach ve'ashrei Every chapter which David liked very much, he opened with Ashrei and he ended it with Ashrei. There is only one. And Tosafot explains it's not only Ashrei, it's also Hallelujah. Tosafot explains not only Ashrei. But the German scholar says, the contextual interpretation, it's not because he likes it. He puts Ashrei at the beginning and at the end. He puts it at the beginning of the book. Because what do we have here? Chapter one, he learns. The tzaddik learns Torah. And chapter two is, other nations come and try to attack Am Yisrael, but the king in Yerushalayim survives. That is the feature of a Jewish king. He has a Torah because he is committed to write himself a Torah, Dvarim Yudzayim, and he functions to protect the Jewish people in Zion in front of them. Zot parasha chaviva, at the beginning of the book, that's the motto of Sefer Tehilim. And interesting enough, the Gemara says it. Haita chaviva, I will not explain it. Rav, Rav Kuk, Zichon Olivracha, explains that's the real Ashrei. Ashrei is happy the person who if somebody combines his personal learning with the relevance of the Jewish people coming back to Zion and having a political system, that's the real Osher. That's the real happiness. But please pay attention. The tzaddik thinks in the Torah. He reflects day and night in learning Torah. The nations who attack us, Yehegurik, they try to kill us. At the beginning of the first chapter, it says, Hashem protects the tzaddik, but the ways of the reshaim will be gone. That is exactly what we have at the end here. So here you see the structure, how much it is connected. The first two chapters are a unit, are a unity. So here I had a great honor to meet some four years ago, an outstanding uh, artist, Dan Rubinstein, originally from Israel in Zurich. And that's another painting which we did together. It's the ninth version, which he finalized it. You have it online, you can print it out if you wish. And uh, it's in, the original is in our home. What is he showing here? He shows here that Sadiq is learning. And he is Ke'etz Shatul al Palgei Maim, at the rivers. At the river of the Torah, they flow. But here we see the, the second chapter. They come to Yerushalayim and try to destroy it. The Mizmor says you will not destroy it. The Mizmor ends, If do et Adonai be'ira'a. The Mashiach of Yerushalayim tells them, worship Hashem with respect. Chapter one and two is the same. It's one unit with two aspects, two components. This beautiful picture reflects it. Dan Rubinstein, we did it together. After the eighth uh, uh, version, I apologized and I told him I feel not comfortable to explain him, to improve it. He told me, lo, 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 ani achitov. I want the best. And he learned the two, tap, the, 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 two, the two chapters by heart and he put everything together. You see here, that is the entire chapter one and two is a Megillah. It's a book because the contextual interpretation shows Sefer Tehilim as a book. And you start reading the book here, that is the beginning, Eitz Chaim, 
And here you continue to read on the website. You can download the picture and you have my explanations there in, Ger in, in Hebrew, English and uh, German. So I want to show you now a few wonderful examples. What is not only the contextual approach, we have also an intertextual inter approach. What is the meaning of context? One text next to it is another text. They are connected, one aleph bit. But you have much more. Sometimes a mismo or any pasuk quotes a totally different uh, context, a totally different text from the Bible in a different book. It says at the beginning of Sefer Tehilim that the tzaddik is in, involved in learning Torah. It says that is the very beginning of Ketuvim. You are now experts in Tanakh in 24 days. You have it all together. What did we learn at the beginning of Sefer Yoshua? Moshe, it says, Moshe of Dimit, he died, and Yoshua has to continue his tradition, his legacy. What does he say, Hashem, to Yoshua? Lo yamush sefer ha-Torah ze mipicha. Vehagita bo yomam valayla. You should think and reflect in the Torah day and night. Yoshua, as the successor of uh, Moshe. Moshe kibel Torah mi Sinai, u mesara le Yoshua. That is the tradition from Har Sinai coming down to Moshe, to Yoshua, and to, to, uh, to all Am Yisrael. Sefer Ketuvim, at the very beginning, Sefer Tehilim, in the first chapter, talks, communicates with the very beginning of Nevi'im. In Nevi'im it says, Sinai, Moshe, Moshe died, Yeshua continued. At the beginning of Tehilim it says, no, the tzaddik, he, from his own initiative, it's his own choice, he is a tzaddik, who learns Torah because he wants it, not because he was, uh, he has the mitzvah to do it. That is the, that's the feature, that's the feature of Sefer Tehilim. It's the human desire to do what he is told to do. So it's the same pasuk, but these are two different sides of the same coin. What are you told to do? Sefer Tehilim, I enjoy to do that. So that's a beautiful intertextuality. I want to show you now other examples. I knew I will not talk about the entire uh, text, but I want to show you another very, very special example. Here, I want to talk to you about King David. King David David HaMelech, yes, historical King David is in Sefer Shmuel, Shmuel Aleph, Shmuel Bet, you learned the books. That is where uh, King David lives. But King David has a very, very active afterlife. He starts a huge career. Look in Yeshayahu, Yirmiyahu, Yechizkel, I will not read all the psukim, but you can see just looking where it's in red. Yeshayahu talks about it many times. Yermiyahu says, Lo yikaret le David, tzmiach le David tzemach, tzemach tzdaka. Yechezkel says, Ve'avdi David na'am betocham. David will come back and he will lead Am Yisrael. And that's what he says in Hoshea, in Amos, Akim et sukat David hanofelet. What do we have? So David keeps living. He keeps singing. Here in Sefer Ezra, in Sefer Bait Sheni, at the time of the Second Temple, in uh, Zechariah, Ezra Nechemiah, we have a lot of psukim where it says the Jewish people came back to Eretz Israel, and they were thinking about David. Ubeit David, kemalach Adonai lifnei, v'shafachti al Beit David, v'al Yosef Yerushalayim, v'chachen v'tachanunim. The house of, the, of King David continues. So regardless that he died, he is Chai Kayam. And they built the Beit HaMikdash. What did they do? They were starting Lehalel et Hashem, Al Yedei David. They were starting to say Halel. Tehilim. What's the phrase they used? The wording, Vayanu behalel uvehodot ladonai kitov kilolam chazdo. Hodul Hashem kitov kilolam chazdo. 
that is Tehillim. So what do we have here? We have the memory of King David in the first temple period, but he keeps living in the second, in the second temple period. When they started to come back to Eretz Yisrael, who was their teacher? Ezra Nechemia. What did Ezra Nechemia do? They connected Am Yisrael to King David. We have a tradition. They come back to Eretz Yisrael. It's not a new area in Am Yisrael. It's back to the old. Renewal. Renewing the old. And they said, Halel Lehodot. Bemitzvah David. According to the mitzvah David gave. He died a few hundred years ago. The mitzvah keeps on. And they were singing, and they were on the steps of Ir David. Bema'alot Ir David. You can guess what they were singing there on the Ma'alot Ir David. One doesn't have to be a genius to understand they were singing Shir HaMa'alot. Bichlei Shir Bema'alot David. King David lives. What do we have here? When they come back, and that is the beauty. These, these four, uh, two chapters talk about Kibbutz Galuyot. We say it today, Yom, Yom, uh, uh, Yom Hatzmaut. It was not created Yom Hatzmaut. It's back to Bait Sheni. We come back. We come these days, we come back. Like, like Bait Rishon, Bait Sheni. And afterwards, they remember we came back from Egypt. Halela Mitzri. We learn when we come back. We have to go back to the sources. And we sing Shira Ma'alot, what we discussed before. That's exactly this double, the double voice. What happened with David? But actually, David lives in a later period. I want to show you now something fascinating. And I have many, many examples. Here are the big scholars. That's the text which Ibn Ezra says. And it's not that we have more insights than Ibn Ezra. Because Ibn Ezra, I think it with a lot of respect for this outstanding uh, Gedol Israel, Gedol Parshanim, he defines the questions. And re reviewing his introduction, where he denies any structure, is the most important basis I have to answer his questions. Here are the two scholars from Germany. Professor Erich Zenger and Frank Lothar Hosfeld. Some of their research is translated to English. They called it the canonical. They are very, very, very much connected to the German research of Wilhausen and Herrn Gunkel, the classical psalm research. So they are not at the level to get enthusiastic like me when I teach it's our story. Because for the Christian tradition, of course, the idea of the world, the future of the world, the, messi the messianic idea of the world is connected to their uh, Jesus, to their tradition. So they learned it, but with a lot of respect, understand the book. If we learn it, and I want to come back to Chazal and show you, that is what the Midrash says. The Midrash says, if you would understand, I cannot analyze this Midrash, it's a fascinating one, it will take time. The Midrash says, Everything that is written in Tehillim, it's the Midrash on Mizmor Gimel. Midrash, uh, te, Midrash Tehillim Mizmor Gimel says, everything that we have in Tehillim, lo yada enosh erka. Nobody knows the value of the book. And afterwards it says, who is the person, Hashem says, umi chamoni yikra veyagideha veyaarcheha li. It's the same source. Erka is the value. The Ya'acheha is the editing, the structure, the flow. Chachamim understood, that is my statement, my understanding, that there is a value in the structure of the book. And Chachamim say, it's worthwhile to read this approach. If you understand the structure of Sefer Tehilim, atayachol achyot meitim velasot muftim. You can revive dead people and you can make miracles if you understand the structure of the book. Ladies and gentlemen, go for it. It will help. We can make triata meitim. I'm not making jokes. 
because we understand that the dead history of King David some 2,000, 3,000 years ago, if we understand the structure of the book, we can revive King David, the fourth and fifth book, King, Kings, the David Kingdom doesn't come to an end. Le David ou le Zaro ad Olam, it continues. That is la Chayot Metim. So here we have the Midrash says it very, very clearly. We have to understand the parashiot of the Torah ala seder. A beautiful Midrash. I want to show you now an unbelievable example. And I know it's a lot of material. There is, it's a whole system. I want to show you here two Mizmorim, where when I was reading it and learning Tehillim in the years before I found this Shita, I got frustrated. Not frustrated, it's a beautiful chapter 104 and a wonderful chapter 105. But how are they connected? Chapter 104 gives a beautiful, beautiful description of the world, of the creation, of the animals, of sunset and sunrise, of the moon. And the world is beautiful. At the end, it says, I will sing for Hashem all my life and I will praise Him and I, I'm happy with Hashem. At the end of the beautiful description of the world, the Meshorer of Tehillim, the author of Tehillim says, hopefully the world will stay as beautiful as the Creator wanted it, and no Rasha and no Chataim should destroy it. Nice. Hallelujah. And afterwards we start a chapter. Oh, remember, tell to the world all the beautiful stories that happened to Am Yisrael. Jewish history. One is Humanities, chapter 105, and 104 is a description of the creation. Biology, zoology, geography, whatever you want, science. What's the connection? Nothing. Because Ibn Ezra said, they're not connected. They are not connected. Let me show you now with the miracles of PowerPoint, how strongly they are connected. Because look at the words which I'm showing you now. We have the word Ashira at the end of 104 and at the beginning of 105. We have afterwards the word Azamra at the end of 104, 104 and at the beginning of 105. And afterwards we have Sichi and we have Sichu Bechol Niflota. And we have Esmach and we have Yismach. Not connected, but one, have, one has to search for that. What's the meaning? The meaning is outstanding. There is a message from comparing two Mizmorim and comparing two and two and two and looking at the 105. That's quite a research. If I look at the world, the beauty of the world, I know that we have to keep the world in a good shape. That's what Hashem wants from us. I have to make sure the world will not get destroyed. What is the message? Am Yisrael has to fix the world in order to keep the beauty of the world the way the Creator wanted it, 104. We have to do something. King David says in his own, or the, the author says in the first person, Ashira, Azamra, Sichi, Esmach. But what is the next step? He goes out and says, Hey, Am Yisrael, make the world a better one. Tell all the nations. That is a deep connection. That is contextuality just of two Mizmorim. I have much more to tell you, which I cannot show it. Yeshayahu, the second part of Yeshayahu, which is also an imitation of Bait Rishon, of the first temple period. At the time of the second temple period, he says, when Israel comes back, he says to Am Israel, I create a new heaven and a new earth. And you will come back to Am Yisrael and you will have the pleasure of being Yam Yerushalayim because you come back. That's exactly what Yeshayahu says, what we read between the two chapters. What I see in the new world, 104, takes me right away with the same expressions to chapter 105. So obviously it's connected. I would like to come now, I have a, much more to say here about that, but to talk about the, the, con the context of 
Sefer Tehillim and Yeshayahu is quite, a, quite an interesting topic. Therefore, I want to focus on that. In, in chapter 107, it says, when Am Yisrael comes back, at the beginning of the fifth book, we should praise and thank Hashem for all His chesed, His charity, and the miracles He does. Rabbi J, could you please translate? You want me to translate? Uh, he broke the uh, copper doors and the, um, what's the bria? The, um, the thing that goes up back, like the, I forget how you say it in English, you know, that pole sort of, um, destroyed, destroyed the steel um, barrier, whatever. We thank Hashem that he led us out from slavery, from captivity, Mizmo 107. That's exactly the same pasuk that we have in Yeshayahu 45. That's what Hashem says to Koresh. Meshicho, Koresh, is a Mashiach. Why? Because he let the Jewish people come back to Eretz Israel. What did he do? He opened, Koresh, the doors from the exile that we could come back to Eretz Israel. Ani lefanecha elech v'hadurim ayasher, daltot nechusha ashaber, uvrichei barzel agadea. It's a quote. If Yeshayahu says that Koresh will bring back the Jewish people from the exile at the beginning of the, the Second Temple period, that is what Sefer Tehilim says, Hashem, thank you. These are the same psukim. They correspond. Yeshayahu is the vision by Hashem and Tehilim is the thank of, hum of human being. Can anybody argue that it's a quote? Of course it is. That is intertextuality. Tehillim goes back at the beginning to the life of David, and Yeshayahu goes back at the beginning to the life in the first temple period. Tehillim continues in the second part, in the time of the uh, restoration, Shivat Zion, and the same as Yeshayahu, because it's the flow from the first temple who keeps us alive in the second temple period. I would like to finish. I will skip this one. Now, I, I want to share with you on a more psychological level. I love this research. I apologize that I was enthusiastic. It's not scholarly research. If you get excited, Rabbi Kelman and friends, please forgive me all my sins. That's not my biggest one. But I get very enthusiastic and I'm addicted to this research. And I see something that I talk to rabbis and outstanding teachers and Talmidei Chachamim. It's obvious. Yes, we have to learn. We have to understand the entire Sefer Tehilim and read it over and over and over and over. But that's what Sefer Tehilim asks from us to do, to learn the Torah Yomam Valayla. So if you read it all the time, it's addicted. But there is much more to it. I like details, I like to connections, I have the search system, and I, I'm, I learn so much from the German scholars. I speak the language as you hear from my accent, but there is something much deeper into it. To understand the entire book of the Torah in a new light, wow, ashreyaish. But there is even something much, much more deeper than that. When I was teaching this book, this idea, a student came up and told me, you're not teaching the text. You're talking about our nation. What happened? King David in the first two books, a beautiful career in his lifetime with Shlomo. There was a destruction and there was a restoration and there is a return to Eretz Yisrael. That's what happened to Am Yisrael. I had the honor to teach that uh, the 150 uh, shiurim with Rav Beni Lau in his wonderful program, Teisha Shtaim Teisha, where he uh, now the second time motivated Am Yisrael went, uh, to learn on a regular basis Torah. His father, Zichon Olivracha, and my father, Zichon Olivracha, are in the edition of the book, which we have here. Tilim is Lev Avot, 
we called it, Rav Ben Ilau and I called it Lev Avot, because it is Lev for Lavi, his father, and Avraham, Yona Gesundheit, my father, both survivors of the Holocaust. They had a very, very long period in their time when they grew up in Poland, when they knew what Torah was. Here you see Rav Gesundheit, the chief rabbi of Warsaw, the last chief rabbi, and Harav Meir, Meir Shapira, who was a cousin, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 father of Rav, of, the father of Rav Lau, that's his brother. They had a strong background in, in the past on Torah, and they saw what the third chapter describes. They went through the Holocaust, both of them. They were together in Auschwitz. They were together the same March, March of Death, and they survived with the miracles. Rav La, uh, uh, Naftali Lau saved his brother, the chief rabbi. My father saved, uh, saved somebody during his March of Death, and they came back, and they survived, and they saw the restoration. And they came back to Yerushalayim, and we, Am Israel came back, not only his father and my father, that's the miracle of our days. It's not only the text, and there's a lot I can tell you about the text, it's our story. Am Israel comes back, and we continue that. So I summarize the book of Tehilim is a book with a story and with a narrative. The book of Tehilim has a message, a clear structure from the beginning of the end. And there is an outstanding chidush parshani uh, interpretation, innovation of this approach to understand Sefer Tehilim. I found a little bit in Chazal, not at, full, not at the full pictures. Yes, I learn a lot, but there are a lot of pieces. Might be it's the lack of my understanding that Chazal actually understood it but they, and they said, you can lehachayot meitim velasot moftim. They had a sensitivity for that. And I can show that on many, many examples. It is a holistic approach to the entire book. And most importantly, the Ramban, Nachmanides, in his famous letter, Igeret Ramban, he says, when you learn, you should always keep in mind when you learn and you leave the books and you go to your whatever you do, Think what you learned, if there is anything that you can do. Today, thinking about King David, destruction and rebuilt, and we come back, do we have any bigger statement of Zionism, of the miracle of what we were praying for two thousands of years, and we are back, Ashrenu, that we come back and we are here. Here you see the references, which are, they will be online, as you see a lot in German. On my website, you have a fuller list. And I wish to thank a lot of people who are tremendous help to make that happen. I thank uh, Susan uh, Suna, and uh, the graphic artist, and my editor, Arya Bartov, and many, many others, Harav Yair Khan, Professor Jonathan Grossman, Dr. Yael Ziglo and other scholars of Jewish and non-Jewish scholars. And I wish to thank you for your attention. If you have any easy question, I'm happy to try to answer. Benny, thank you very much. If you want to take a look at the chat box, you do want me to read the questions for you on the chat box. But take a look at the chat. You'll see a, a number of questions. If you want. 37. Okay, here, maybe I'll... Uh, you wanted to give yeah, me Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the questions. Okay, so pointing out, obviously, King David didn't write all of Tehillim. That's quite clear as uh, you sort of becomes obvious and that's accepted. Okay. Um, are there any means, Maureen, you think should be in other books? Maybe that's too hard to answer now, but like, uh, you know, here's um, David I wants to know, uh, made more sense for Ms. Moore 3 to have been in the second book alongside the historical Ms. Maureen. So I, would, I want to relate to that interesting question. There are many books, many Mizmorim, which I was asking for many, many years, why are they here? And one of the biggest problems was 137, Al Narot Bavel. How does that come in there? It was like a thorn in my eyes. We talk about Halela Mitzri, Halela Gadol, everything is wonderful. And it's like, like uh, you have a flat tire. You talk about beautiful Shivat Zion, Al Narot Bavel. 
which reminds me of the Khurban. And I found outstanding connections, which I cannot present now, comparing it to the end of Sefer Yirmiyahu, where end of Sefer Yirmiyahu quotes has the same line as 135 and 137. The same Mizmor in Yirmiyahu talks of the same text. So we have, like the dentist says, sometimes you have two teeth and you have to build a, a bridge. Yirmiyahu explains what Sefer Tehilim did. Because in Yirmiyahu it says, the entire world will recognize Hashem, but Babel will be punished. 137 says the entire world is invited to come to Eretz Yisrael. And the doors are open for Am Yisrael to come back to Eretz Yisrael. But 137 says, Bavel, those who destroy the Jewish people, there will be a punishment. Who gives the punishment? Only Hashem. But once they are punished, they will be part of the of the Geula, of the of the, um, the revelation of the uh, how do you say the redemption of the entire world. So I I want to encourage you if you have a question, how does one mismol, why is it here or there? Don't hesitate to ask the question. Sometimes you don't have the answer. Please do not come to the conclusion that there is no order. I understand Ibn Ezra, he didn't have enough indication to look at the entire picture. But I'm convinced it is a flow. Sometimes I don't know why it is there and how it works. So I had this question, let me tell you, for three years. And I'm now nine years in research. For three years, I said, uh-oh, it will not work. 137, it will not work. I have almost 148 chapters, but twos don't, two, these two don't work. And when I saw the Pasuk in Yirmiyahu, I had a big time time. Not only I could, that I could connect 135 to 137, it is the flow of the entire book. So logic. So I cannot prove it, but I want to encourage you, ask the questions, ask the questions, and if you ask the questions, this is you will find an answer. Okay, on a related question, so on the book one contains many mesmerim of pain and, and despair. How does that go into it, the theme of, uh, of studying Torah? Sorry, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear. Yeah, just saying, on, on a, a similar question, book one has a number of mesmerim of pain and despair. How does that fit with the general thesis of the importance of, of studying Torah? What is the pain of despair? Some of the Mizmorim in book one. Yes. So, of course, that has to be looked at a very... It is not only Torah. The, fir the first book was a big challenge. When I studied, I, would, I got very quick, quickly clarity in the fifth and fourth book. And the first one was a long, long difficulty to understand. There is a famous professor in uh, Roma, Gianni Barbero, I'm very, I'm very friendly with him. And he did research, he's retired, he worked for 40 years on Sefer Lishon. It is not his learning in the sense of academic activity. It's his learning of his Mishnah, of his attitude, of his philosophy. What he had, in, uh, what he had over these, uh, what he showed in the first book, there are four units which I could not present here, which show a beautiful, beautiful syllabus. How to deal with wicked people. That's not learning in the sense of Torah, Bereshit, Noach, Lech Lecha. It is learning how to deal with the evil, with Resha. And there is a first unit, 3 to 14. There is a second unit that not only want to survive, you also want to improve your qualities, 15 to 24. And afterwards, 25 to, 30, to 34, that is that uh, Mechaber, the Meshorer, the author of Tehilim, he goes his own way and he gets closer to Hashem. And afterwards, he teaches other. And from 35 to 41, he overcomes the bad, the bad people in the world and he tries to educate them 
and to bring the message to the world. It's not learning in the sense of yeshiva and dafyoimi and parashat shavua. It's learning on another level, learning for life. Okay, last question, but I think I'm um, just pointing out, how, how could the Ibn Ezra have, have missed this in a sense? In other words, uh, you know, as they say, he was um, a, a genius. In other words, he, he, he didn't see the word. That's sort of a, just an interesting sort of idea. I mean, that's always true. Whenever someone comes up with a great hit, why didn't Rashi think of it? Why didn't the Ramam think of it? But you have any comments on that? So first of all, this genius mind of Ibn Ezra, there are many big who said, I don't know more than what he did, but they gave a very nice analogy. Nanas al gabe anak. I'm like a, how do you say, a dwarf? Right. Yeah. On, on the on the shoulders, shoulders of giants. Of a giants. You're not. The, I'm not that big. I'm Mr. Nobody. GMG Gornish mit Gornish. But if we have today the view to look at the book because there are new ways of literature. We look at the entity. We have a holistic approach. We have a psychosomatic approach. In medicine, people were not talking about psychosomatic. Rambam was, but most people were not, because every unit was a mizmor, mizuk tilim, a kapitel tilim. So you had no desire to look at that. It didn't bother Ibn Ezra. It was not of concern. The te Sefer Tehilim is very, very, very beautiful. 150 pearls. You can enjoy each of them. There was no desire to build the chain. Why? Because I think that we, as we are familiar with Sefer Tehilim, oh, I know Ashrei by heart from the age of six. I know Psukei de Zimra, Kabbalat Shabbat, Shir Shel Yom, Kikrat I know pieces. I'm lost with stones of the ache but I never saw the picture. The German scholars, they came up with a new view. And Rashi says in his introduction to Parshat Vayeshev that there will be always new ways. When he was talking to his grandson, the grandson of Rashi was Rashbam. And he spoke to his grandson, Rashbam, an outstanding Parshan, very, very rational. And he said, he admitted Rashi Zayda Rashi admitted to his grandson when he was 22, would I have time? I would like to engage more in the study. So I'm, I, I, I'm still Mr. Nobody and I'm that small. But learning from others and having Sefahilim, which such a beautiful insight, a major contribution, and that's the beauty of the Torah, Zedor Dorshav, He's more 24. In every generation, we can learn new things. The chidush that I try to show you is hopefully, will hopefully inspire you. You're welcome to send me emails uh, and uh, learn about it. With, visit the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew website. You have here my, oops, you have here somewhere my email address, and I will be more than happy to uh, think together about questions which come up and we are in the learning process. So I don't think we should be discouraged by not, by, oh, somebody else could not find it. Rashi said, whatever I found, you will find much more. That's the beauty of Limut Torah. Okay, the only thing, Benny, I, I disagree with you is that you're not the small from small. You're not Gornish but Gornish. You're really one of the most creative, um, like teachers of Torah. This you got um, a taste very quickly, but we had the pleasure of having Benny in Toronto for three years. And while he was doing his PhD and a fellowship in medicine, and on the side, his beautiful going off to, to Kinko, right? That's where he used to get his PowerPoints and the color coded, his shiurim, everything is color coded. As is on Haggadah Tefillah in so many areas where Benny finds the intertextuality and the books he wrote for his kids. It's very, very original and, and, and creative. So I do encourage everybody to take a look at the website and please God, we'll have more of you uh, on Torah Motion. Tomorrow, Dr. Shimon Lerner on Sefer Mishle. We move quickly here, you know, Tanakh, you're going to read 929 chapters. We, we don't do it every day. We give you, you know, you know, you know breaks, but not between Monday, Tuesday. 